All right, Ben, go ahead. Hi, Chris. How are you doing today? Good. How are you, Ben? Pretty good. Um, I'm just curious. I mean, yesterday um, they dropped the Twitter video about the whole number zero thing for uh, special teams players. I was just kind of curious what are your thoughts on uh, that number zero and just kind of adding a new thing to the team that's number. No, yeah, I think it's awesome to kind of be a part of the start of a new tradition here at Penn State. Um, and it's really cool that not only Coach Franklin, but Coach Lorg recognize that special teams is very important and the number zero will be given to someone on special teams. And I think that's just really cool. I don't think anybody else in the country has been doing that. So I think it's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, it's always so annoying when you have to. It's like middle school, yeah. Justin, real quick, and then I'll come back to you, Ben. All good. I'm on. I'm good. I'm I'm unmuted. Uh, thanks for doing this, Chris. Uh, I just wanted to ask you. Obviously, with you know a unique off season with a ton of challenges, unlike normal. Like, how much have the special team guys kind of been able to get their heads together? You know, work on some things while obviously maintaining protocols and stuff like that. Yeah, I think. Um, kind of with our position, it's a little bit easier to kind of go get work in and stay socially distant. Um, you know, we don't have to hit anybody all the time and we can just go out to a random field and that's all we need. So I think me, Blake, Jake specifically have gotten a lot of work um, since we've been here in June. Um, just going out every day, um, working on our craft, getting more chemistry together, especially as Jordan's going to be the new holder this year with for Jake. So I think it's been honestly a blessing because um, each day we kind of have so much free time you know normally we practice or we condition like two three hours a day every day in the summer whereas this year was three times a week so the other four times a week we could go out and get our work in. I, mean, I was just curious speaking of Jordan just how has he kind of adapted to these new roles obviously he's taking on punting and then as well as holding. So how's he kind of, you've seen him grow kind of into some of this new stuff. He's put in a lot of work. Um, I mean, honestly, last year he did the same thing. He just really kind of prepared, uh, learned a lot from Blake, obviously. Uh, we, him and I still talk to Blake every day. Kids killing in the league. So, I mean, learning from him, talking to him all the time and then getting work with me, like I told Justin, you know, all throughout June, July, while we were here. Um, he's really kind of stepped up and I think he's going to have a really good year. Just observing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess, uh, Chris, thanks for, for meeting with us. Um, I don't know, I was late. Maybe they asked you this, but I mean, this is a fun little question. What, what have you been doing to uh, pass the time over the last few weeks? I mean, when you're not at practice and, and, or just doing anything with the team, just on your free time? Um, you know, of course, I got to do a lot of studying. Uh, my major is kind of one of the more difficult ones here. So I got chemistry and exercise physiology to do but I also have been uh re-watching Game of Thrones for the yeah. th third time in my life and uh it's been it's been fun we've been getting Jordan into it me and my other roommate Mike Miranda he's watched it like six times so we just kind of yeah. forced Jordan to start watching it with us and he's finally getting into it yeah very cool I mean, that's a it's a big big show so that's impressive to, to watch it three three different times oh yeah it's it's super long you got to get through the first three seasons and then it's, it's awesome. Yeah. You, you grew up in Ohio, right? Columbus. Yeah. Right outside of Columbus. I went to Miami university. So. Okay. Brick Street? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was a uh, graduate in 2019. So a couple okay. years ago, but yeah. No, I, I love going to Miami. Uh, I got a, I got a bunch of buddies who go there. Uh, yeah. Matt Griffin hammer transferred there. Um, he used to play here, but he's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a uh, are you a fan of Skyline, Skyline Chili? Yeah, so I grew I grew up in Florida, so it was definitely different for me. I I I, I miss it at, at times. I mean, there would be times that you kind of get sick of it, but oh yeah, uh, I miss it. I mean, it's it's definitely different, and I don't I, I don't understand the hate on it. I think people just think it's gross because they don't, haven't tried it yet, and then once they try it, they're like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah, we get it every time we go back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Well, we'll uh, let Andrew ask a question real quick. Um, let me unmute you, and whenever you're ready, Andrew. Hey, Chris, thanks for doing this. Um, you know, Jordan Stout, his name is all over the special team steps chart this year. You know, 
Um, what kind of guy is he in the locker room and, and how can you speak uh, for his work ethic? Uh, I would say his work ethic is probably unmatched. I mean, yeah, we get a lot of hate for just being specialists and kind of not doing as much as the other guys. But I think we, me, Jordan, Jake, and the other guys, we do put in the extra work, especially Jordan. You know, he's always working in the weight room, trying to get his arms a little bigger, um, definitely trying to improve his leg strength, as I've seen, you know, throughout this whole progression. He really worked hard over quarantine when we were back home. Um, and now it, you can really just see the difference. The pop off his leg is amazing. Um, as for the leader, uh, he really is a positive guy, um, knows when to speak up, knows when to be quiet and put his head down to work. And I think the guys in the locker room really respect him. And if I could follow up with that, um, you know, he said um, when he was a freshman at Virginia Tech, he hit a 76 yarder in practice. Do you think we could see, you know, kind of a glimpse of that leg in, in a game this year? Uh, I mean, I think he could probably hit 80 yarders depending on the win. Like his leg's incredible. I'm not going to, you know, don't mark, like, who knows what he can do. But I think, you know, him and Jake really push each other every day, um, getting both of them better at the same time. And I think Jordan, you know, obviously last year hit that, he was 57, 56 uh, pit, and you guys all saw it. And he actually missed that ball. So it could have gone probably in from 60 or so. So maybe this year, depending on the games and depending on the weather, we might see some long field goals from him. And, and over the past few months, what have, what have you been working on, you know, heading into the year? Uh, specifically, just kind of getting stronger. Um, this is my fourth year here and kind of starting to mature a little bit more, finally get going. Uh, I had some, you know, weight issues when I was first getting here, getting a little too big, eating too many late night Domino's pizzas. But <laughs> now just kind of kind of get more mature, grow into my body more, um, focus on kind of my snap speed and making sure I'm still staying consistent at the same time. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Ryan, do you want to, I'll unmute you since you're the only one in here. Hey, Chris. Um, my main question was just about um, how yesterday the team announced that a special teamer would wear number zero. Is there like any guy that you think stands out or is like um, deserving of that? A few guys have mentioned uh, Jonathan Sutherland already. I don't know if that's one you had in mind. Yeah, uh, I would say there's a few guys. Um, Really, they kind of pop out to mind. Of course, Jay Sev, he's a, he's a dog. Um, really just kind of his his work ethic is one of the best I've ever seen. Um, really just doesn't matter if he's on defense or special teams. He's always the same guy, always goes as hard. Um, another guy could be Hartlob, Drew Hartlob. Uh, probably one of the fastest kids I've ever seen, except for Dan Jacinta and uh, KJ. But the kid works hard. He knows his role. Um, special teamer in and out. Um, and then obviously Jordan, Jordan wants it. We'll see what happens, but I think he just wants it for the clout, but we'll see. I think a lot of guys, um, with this new tradition, we'll kind of see how much coach Franklin puts in, in importance on special teams. And I think more guys will want to work harder, um, show that they can impact the field, you know, not just on offense and defense. I think it would be a really good thing for our program. And I guess follow, uh, following up on Sutherland, I know last year, like before the Michigan game, he had got that like letter in the mail that kind of blew up on social media. Do you think the team kind of rallied around that? And like, did that kind of help his leadership or like show it any any more than before? Yeah, I 100% agree that um, we as a we as the players rallied around him. We had his back. The coaches had his back. Coach Franklin, you know, I believe had a, a nice long statement at his pre press conference that like right after that, he has his back. Um, but really, Jonathan, you know, you know, of course, I'm not, I'm not in his position, um, but I really think he handled that well. Um, he just kind of put his head down and worked and wanted to show everyone that he's still a dog because he is. Um, he wasn't going to let anybody from the outside kind of influence him at all. And really, you know, as a team, we just supported him doing that. All right, those are the only questions I had. So thanks, Chris. Yeah, appreciate you, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, Sean. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I am well, thank you. You're the only one in here, so. That's great. Oh. I, I, it's my <laughs> exclusive. No, I'm happy. I'm a former long snapper myself, so I can't wait to talk oh. some shop. So, Chris, how you doing, man? Good, how are you? Oh, not too bad. Let me turn on my recorder here so I don't miss all this. 
Uh, let's see. All right. Not sure if you've had any questions yet, but number zero, what do you think of it? And why is a long snapper the best position to have number zero? <laughs> uh, I think it's really awesome. Uh, you know, I don't think any other school is kind of doing something like this where they're putting the importance on special teams and showing how much Coach Franklin and Coach Lord really appreciate the guys that uh, give it all on fourth down. Um, awesome would be an understatement if I got number zero. Uh, I think it'd be not only just funny because, you know, I've always had 91 or like a weird number, um, but having zero would be pretty sweet. Uh, don't think it would be me. Uh, I wish it would be, but um, I think the guy who does get it's really going to show out this year and ball out and show everyone why he deserves that number. Do you like go stump for that? Like, do you maybe you say, Hey coach, what's, uh, what's my chances here? And I, you know, I would, I wouldn't mind being that guy. Yeah. I mean, I could probably call him up and be like, Hey, if you know, if you need someone with a number, uh, I, I gotcha. But you guys get leftovers, right? As snappers, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So is that a season long thing then? Uh, as far as I know, I don't know all the exact details of like, if it's going to switch game to game or if it's going to be someone gets it and then they're have the, the number zero for the rest of the their career uh not really sure um he just kind of released the video for the number zero to us like probably a couple hours before you did so you know we're just kind of in the dark just as just like you guys are very cool is there anybody that jumps to your mind when you think that this this is the guy that deserves it um i would say i, I mean obviously jordan jordan really wants it uh but you know he's definitely been a force um coming in from virginia tech you know kicking off you know, two or three yards out of the end zone. This year he's going to punt and hold. Um, you know, it really does it all for specialist group. And then also guys like Jonathan, Jonathan Sutherland, Isaac Lutz, Drew Hartlob. Those are a couple of the key special teamers that, you know, really that's kind of what they do and what they're really good at. Not to saying that they're not, you know, Lutz is obviously a great receiver. So Jonathan Sutherland, great safety. But, you know, on special teams, they really make a giant impact with their consistency. What, what do you think about the commitment to special teams? Obviously, that's a point of emphasis for you guys. I was talking to Jesse earlier. You, you know, you keep hammering home special teams. What do you think that says, I guess, since Joe Lorig arrived, about the program's commitment to, to getting where it needs to be? Uh, I think Coach Lorg really just kind of brought in a system that guys were able to buy into. Um, he takes care of the guys on special teams, you know, where some guys, you know, special teams periods, it's just about, you know, running down the field KOR. Like, it's basically like conditioning where Coach Lorg really kind of really emphasizes simplicity equals speed. He wants guys to use their athleticism, use their speed all over the field and not have to think too much. So, and I think really guys have bought into him, um, not only because his schemes are great, but he's a great dude. Um, he gives it to you straight. I kind of like that out of him. He's not going to beat around the bush or anything. So guys are buying into him, and you can see the successes that we've had, you know, this past year. Nicole, I do have more questions, but if, if Parth yeah, wants let, to ask, let me let Parth go real quick and then we'll come back to you, Sean. Yeah. Whenever you're ready, Parth. I appreciate the time this morning, Chris. Thank sure. you. Um, I know y'all play different sides of the ball, but just, you know, you coming in at the same time as Journey Brown. Um, what is it about him that's allowed him to overcome all the adversity he's overcome to, to kind of get where he is today? I think it's the type of man he is. Um, you know, Journey has personally been there for me multiple times. Um, really just always been a guy that I can go to and lean on when I'm struggling or even when I'm doing well. Um, Journey, his work ethic is, you know, one of the best I've seen, um, you know, no matter what's going on. You know, he's been through a lot since I've been here. Um, really always kind of, you can kind of see it on his face sometimes. It's like, yeah, he's, he's struggling today. And that's when, you know, it's our job on our teammates to pick him up, keep him going. But then, Sometimes when we're struggling, and even if he's struggling, he comes to pick us up. Um, I really think that speaks to his character. Um, one of the, he's one of the best guys I've ever known, truly, um, on and off the field. And then obviously last year, you know, had a lot of success on the field, which he deserved. Um, and I look forward to seeing that happen again this year. When you talk about him I'm kind of struggling, is it just with the loss of his grandmother a couple of years back? Is that what you're referring to? Or is there other things that no, I mean, that's what I, yeah, that's what I refer to. Um, you know, personally, I lost my grandpa this summer, and so I kind of know how it felt. But, you know, I know his grandma was very, very close to him, you know, all through their childhood, or his childhood, so I'm sorry. And I kind of understand what he was going through, um, and he really handled it very, very well. Um, and you could see it, you know, every day 
how he was kind of going about his day, going about the practice, classroom, you know, everything. I really think he handled it amazingly. And just real quick, what are some things that you know, you've personally done to kind of lift his spirits during those times? Uh, I think just be there for him. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of a, a bubbly guy. I like to make jokes and always kind of just go over to him, you know, during practice um, in the weight room, just kind of messing with him, um, pushing his buttons a little bit, just kind of get him thinking about something else. And then obviously, you know, off the field, um, send him a text every once in a while. Um communicating with him um he's always texting me the two like you know it's a great relationship that him and i have and i look forward to that relationship you know continuing in the future appreciate it man thank yeah, you thanks Parth. sean i will unmute you excellent thank you no problem um, typically when you break in a new punter there's going to be a learning curve there but with jordan how does that change? I mean, you go from Blake, who was obviously fantastic, to Jordan, who has showcased his leg strength and everything. How does that transition take place? And, I mean, I guess how are you guys feeling about the punting game? Um, the transition really just happens where um, you learn about his preferences, um, where he likes the ball, right hip, a little higher, where he hates the ball. Uh, Jordan hates the ball right at his face. He says he just kind of blinks a little bit and throws off his timing, whereas Blake hated the ball low. Like if it was below his knees, he just it messed up their steps or whatever. So you just kind of got to learn uh, kind of what they like, where not to miss. Um, not that I missed, but um, where kind of to, you know, if we roll out, if we go right or left, where his steps are. Um, and that just takes a lot of repetition. Um, him learning how to catch my snaps. Not that he didn't uh, catch a lot last year, but, you know, Blake took uh, most of them last year. But just kind of learning everything. With that, and then also, um, you know, both of those guys are holders. Blake was a great holder. He could catch everything, never miss a spot. And Jordan's kind of getting into that. Um, he, I think he's really kind of super interested in it. He likes the, the technique of it. Um, it's something different for him. Uh, him and I, you know, catch probably 20, 30 snaps a day just holding. Um, it's fun. He always, you know, will hit Blake up if he's struggling or if he wants to, you know, tweak something. But I think really just throughout this whole quarantine, um, we've been able to get a lot of work in and kind of break him in, to, so to speak. Can you, can you compare his leg strength with, with Jordan, or excuse me, with Blake in terms of what, what to expect there? Um, I would say, and this is kind of my personal opinion, Blake had a better big ball, which is kind of what specialists call it. Like he could hit, you know, a 60 yard 5'8. But Jordan's, overall consistency is a little bit better. Not that Blake wasn't consistent. He was here for four years, one of the best partners Penn State all the time. But Jordan, from what he's shown me, he can really, you know, angle the ball well, um, always has great height on the ball, good hang time. And I think that will be a very good thing this year, especially with how fast our gunners always are with Hart Lob and Tariq. All right. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it, Sean. Parth, I don't know if I left you enough time there to ask a question. That's all good. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for the time. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.